name is Steinun Sigurðardóttir. I'm in my house in Selfoss, 50 kilometers east of Reykjavík in Iceland, having fled from my beloved France in the time of the virus. The story I'm about to tell you is importantly told to me by my nephew when I met him a few years back. I had heard bits and pieces of it, but it was only when he told it to me that I gained some additional information and realized the huge importance of the story. It's probably the story of how I came about, and that is why I'm telling it, I think. And also to give you some insight into the lives of very poor farmers in the volcanic area of south, the remote volcanic area of southeast Iceland, close to the biggest glacier in Europe, Vatnajökull. So it takes place the story at my father's farm, where he grew up with 14 sisters and brothers. They were poor people, but miraculously none of the children died. They all survived in this age when uh, children mortality, when child mortality was extremely high in Iceland. And the year is about 1910. Now at the farm there were not only the children and the father and their mother and grandmother, maternal grandmother, there was also a maid at the farm. And as sometimes happened in those days, the maid became pregnant by the master of the house. When this was found out, the mother and the grandmother, the ladies of the house, decided that the maid should not stay. So my grandfather found a place for her with his sister in Reykjavik, who was a wealthy bourgeois woman. And they walked to Reykjavik together, my grandfather and the pregnant maid. It took seven days. They did not have horses. And then he walked back another seven days. Now, when it was found out by the lady in Reykjavik that the maid was pregnant, she did not wish to keep her. So my grandfather, he walked to Reykjavik for the second time and had found a place for her in Grimsnes. This is my mother's district in the southwest. But they didn't make it because the maid was about to have the child. So they had to stop at Spóastaðir, a farm very close to the cathedral in Skálhalt. And this is where they stayed from then on. And the lady of the house, whose name was Steinun, my namesake, she doted on this beautiful, intelligent boy. And he, in fact, became the only one of the whole flock of sisters and brothers who was educated. And he lived his whole life here in Selfos, in fact, uh, in a very beautiful little house next to the river, Ölvisá, the big river. Now comes the bit of how I came about. This uh, bastard son, he was a teacher in my mother's district in Grimsnes, and he found a place for my father to become a helping hand at my mother's farm. And that was how they met. Well, very many years after that, they got married. And not only my father found his wife and my mother, her husband there, but another of my mother's sisters and my father's brothers, they found their way to each other. So that means that I have relatives that are almost my sister and brother, because our mothers are sisters and our fathers are brothers. And now comes the bit, the last bit of the story. My nephew, the son of the bastard child, he told me that when his father was dead, he found a letter written by his father, that is our grandfather, on his confirmation day. And more importantly, this, the letter was beautiful and warm. But he also, with the letter came, a gift, a present of money. 
And in the letter, my grandfather is making ex excuses that he couldn't raise a higher sum. But my nephew, he calculated and he found out that this was actually a very important sum of money in those days. That my grandfather had given to his bastard son on his confirmation day out of the goodness of his soul and the generosity of his heart.